Kronoski from uh, our Global Data Warehouse Leaders team. And uh, today I'm going to continue our Big Data SQL Deep Dive series. And uh, uh, today I would like to talk about joints, joint different data sets within Big Data SQL. But before all, let me do a quick reminder. What is Big Data SQL? Big Data SQL, it's a uh, process who, uh, which read data uh, on HDFS or uh, HBase or Oracle NoSQL or other NoSQL database. So in other words, from the storage layer. And Big Data SQL, it's processing uh, engine like uh, Spark, like MapReduce, like Impala. And uh, we didn't bring something new uh, into storage layer. We just install our process on every data node, on every Hadoop node, which scan storage data. So on Oracle database side, uh, you have to define external table, either Oracle Hive or Oracle HDFS type, and then you specify all connection credentials to your Hadoop cluster. So you specify which had, uh, Hadoop cluster, which table in Hive, I'm going to use and you do some kind of mapping in Oracle database. When you run the query, first what you're gonna do, you jump to the name node or have a uh, metastore and get back all metadata, uh, which uh, stores data location, data structure, so some other uh, uh, meta information about directory or subdirectories which you're going to scan. Then database do query planning and start actual scan. Actual scan filter out all unnecessary data, prune out all unnecessary columns, and then move back on the small piece, hopefully, of the data on the database side. And then we do final transformation, for example, join. For example, you could join uh, external table, which is on Oracle HDFS and Oracle internal table within the same query. How to do this efficiently, I will talk today. So, uh, but another one, uh, uh, important note, another one reminder, how Big Data SQL works. So, uh, this is zoom of one of the Hadoop nodes. And as you can see, you have data node which actually stores the data. Uh, we have smart scan which is uh, inherited from exadata. And we have another one process which convert any type, any block, uh, either HDFS or NoSQL split, HBase split into Oracle format and pass it to the smart scan, to the Oracle smart scan. So you read any data format. Then using Serdia and record reader, you fetch the records and you uh, uh, fetch the records, you fetch the columns, and then you convert this data into Oracle data type and pass it on into smart scan. Smart scan do actual uh, scan filtration, so like Exadata smart scan does, and then move up to the database only necessary data. So, just huge optimization which Oracle has for the giants is Bloom filter. Before all, let me um, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, remind or explain what is Bloom filter. And right now, uh, next couple of slides, I'm going to tell about concept about uh, mathematical concept. What is Bloom filter? independently of the technologies. So it is data structure which could answer on question, is this value exists in some particular array of values? And answer could be definitely no or maybe. Um, let me show you one example. Uh, again, it's so far, it's technologically independent. It's just a mathematical example. What is Bloom filter? So, and uh, uh, let's imagine we have three different hash functions, and they return value in range of between 
1 and 12. So, and we have array of strings, Oracle database filter. And we need to create Bloom filter over this data set. I apply hash, three hash functions on Oracle. I apply three hash functions on database. I apply three hash functions on the filter. And then I mark values which has at least one matching as two, two or one. So I, I mark it somehow that it, it's filled uh, value. So, and after this, I have created Bloom filter for array Oracle, database, and filter. Uh, I'm going to check does Oracle is in our array. I got the values one, four, five, and I get three of three matching, which could tell me that Oracle maybe exists in these data sets. Uh, because three hash functions return value, which is represent in our array. But let's check what uh, what will happen if I will check Alex? If I will check uh, Alex existing existence in this array, answer also will be maybe, because uh, again I got three of three matching of the uh, uh, for, for the Bloom filter, but uh, first uh, one came from Oracle, second came from database, third one came from filter. So, and if we have maybe answer we have to recheck to exact check to, to have exact check so and uh what's the profit or what the sense of the bloom filter uh let's imagine that we have word byte and we want to check does byte exist in bloom filter and here we got answer definitely no because six element of the array not uh, uh, it's, it's not true. So, and the real power of Bloom filter, it's definitely no answers because they could help us to eliminate significant amount of data. Um, let me give you an example. Let's imagine you store small dimension table in Oracle database and huge fact table into Hadoop and you want to join it. So you create Bloom filter into Oracle database, push it down on the Hadoop side and apply it on the Hadoop side. So in other words, you will push down all processing on the Hadoop side. Let me give you one example. Uh, I run the same query and plan statement, join filter create, tell us that we create Bloom filter our small table, small dimensional table into database. And then we push it back towards the Hadoop side and apply join filter use. And this allow us to eliminate 94% of the data. So this optimization allow us to leave 94% of the data on the cell side and bring back on the database side only 6% of the data. So, uh, next optimization is using Bloom filter together with storage indices. Uh, yesterday I was, uh, 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 sorry, not yesterday, last, last uh, uh, webinar, I was talking about storage indexes. And uh, let me do a quick reminder, what is it? So it's performance feature of uh, Exadata and Big Data SQL, which works in similar way on both platforms. So the main idea when you scan the block and you uh, don't have any, and it doesn't return any uh, rows, you create some stat, some metadata over it. So you create minimum and maximum of this column. And when next query will come, you may skip part of the blocks. You may skip some of the blocks and uh, you will uh, scan in good scenario uh, way less blocks. So, and um, 
um, so here is a, you, you could find the statistics, how efficient this uh, uh, storage index is. It, it's called cell 60 granule IO by by storage index. And the good news, if you run the join, like I show in my example, you also could find in these statistics, pleasant surprise that storage index indices works together with Bloom filters. So you run the join, you apply the Bloom filter, and Bloom filter are applied over storage indexes. And in the end, you scan much less data. Uh, only one thing that uh, it's not gonna work after system just start up. So storage index have to be run up, but uh, as soon as you build it, you could start using it. And here is the plan of this query. We could find that again we use Bloom filter and automatically you will use storage indices. So storage indices could significantly improve your join uh, 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 your joints. Uh, if you sort out HDFS files properly, you will have uh, uh, better profit and better performance with storage indices. So, and now let's talk about, uh, it was uh, all the optimizations was about Bloom filter. It's like standard scenario when you join dimension table and fact table. But what if I would like to join uh, two big tables, like five terabytes tables and three terabytes uh, tables? First of all, I don't think that it's uh, it's real case because it's you have to do some something with uh, these data sets. So it has to be either report or they'll drop and in many cases which i saw it's it's just wrong use case for, for for the database when you need to join this data sets but actually you could do some uh optimizations even in this case try to fit as much as you can in memory so use pj for this increase pj aggregate target and uh, uh this will a low Oracle database to use more memory for, for the giants. So in 12C, or to be safe, we also recommend to set up PJ aggregate limit. It's kind of hard limit uh, to prevent uh, or, or to prevent using more memory rather than you have. So second thing that uh, one parallel slave could use uh 20 uh, percent of uh pj memory so and uh if you wanna have more uh if you wanna have more memory you have to run more processes so by default even more by default it kept by two gigabytes and the obvious solution for this run more parallel slaves so but anyway you may still work through the temp you may still work through the temp, and uh, uh, at this case, what you can do, you can apply one parameter which will increase IO size, IO temp size, and you your temp usage will be more efficient. So these these three basic steps which you could do to optimize join of two big data sets. But uh, again, I encourage you don't do this with the with the Oracle database and think twicely. Is it really what you wanted to accomplish? Because most of the real customer workloads uh, join relatively small table, uh, which could be uh, covered by Bloom filter with uh, some small, some big packed table. So. Uh, more details you could find in our perfect documentation and in Big Data SQL blog post. Okay, any questions? Uh, no questions or
Okay, uh, I'll read the question from the chat to start uh, our, to begin our conversation. So, and um, uh, Lisa asked about, do we need exact license to use Big Data SQL if we have Oracle DB and Oracle Exadata, Oracle BD, I think. Um, so, yes, uh, Big Data SQL, it's a software product and it requires separate licenses. So does somebody else have any questions? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I hope that everything was clear and nobody has questions or... Hey, hey, uh, like, hey I, it's Nick. I, I've got a real quick uh, question. Hey, I was just wondering, hey, the, so the Bloom filter functionality then, in, in here you mentioned simply uh, view the external table with um, a Hive or HDFS. Um, is there anything else that that it uh, works with now, or is it just those two sources? Mm -hmm. So, uh, very good question. Uh, actually, uh, Hive, uh, it's our preferable way to define external tables with Big Data SQL. It's defined Oracle Hive. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to explain all all, all the metadata, but uh, the great news that you could define, for example, using storage handler, you could define uh, NoSQL database, Oracle NoSQL database, or HTTP right. within Hive. Right. And then you could reuse it uh, with the Big Data SQL, and it's how we query NoSQL databases. You define NoSQL database in Hive, and then you define Oracle Hive in like Oracle external table. Um, so, so the Bloom filter would still work across that. Yeah. Uh, no. And then, uh, so, storage index will not work. Bloom filter will work. Okay. Storage, okay. Uh, so index the storage index is is, uh, is for HDFS and Hive only then. Yeah. For for or for, for I would say for Hive ta for Hive table without storage handlers. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if if you define a Hive table without storage handler, you're fine. Uh, if you define the storage handler, it's quite it's getting quite complicated, and you cannot use it. Okay, gotcha. All right. I mean, it sounds like the way to go, and and probably the the most common use case would be via Hive at this point, correct? Yeah, yeah. I don't think uh, that I don't think that. Um, uh, that in real world, in real use cases, it's uh, it's different. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I personally think that Hive is like default uh, way to to define data into into HDFS to yeah. write yeah, exactly. metadata over. Yeah, so it's right. simply yeah. because the the in, inherent shared expressivity of the meta store, um, not necessarily the functionality of of Hive queries or anything like that. Yep. Yeah. 